various abuses does not choose any age, nationality, or even gender. Abuse has a lifelong impact to victims, social, physical, emotional, and even psychological. The study shows that victims of abuses become dysfunctional adult, incapable of stable relationship. And worse, it is being cyclical today that abused individuals become abusers themselves in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pride and honor to present to you my advisee, Attorney Danielito Jimenez, who will uh, discuss on this matter and even touch up some topics on gender equality, male abuse, human rights, even those uh, straight male in a relationship or even those in the LGBT community. I present to you the researcher, Attorney DJ, as he is commonly or fondly called, is a true blooded Tomasian having been born, raised, and completed all his schooling at UST from elementary to college and law school and soon to be one of the first graduates of the newly created UST Graduate School of Law. He is currently a trial practitioner, an educator, and a legal and media consultant of the National Security Advisor of the National Security Council. Attorney DJ is also a community leader and a law advocate inside and outside of UST. In UST, he is a former president of the UST Central Student Council as well as founding president of the Tomasian Alumni Leaders Incorporated, TALA, and president of AB Faculty Club. He has been known as advancing the interest of students and faculty members. Outside of UST, he is the managing partner of Jimenez Law Office, a small-sized law office providing general legal services. Aside from his practice, he also maintains an online presence through legal advocacy page, the Pinoy Street Lawyer, providing as well pro bono legal advices. His page also features blogs, videos, and other discourses on a variety of legal issues as well as other social issues. Over the past decades, Attorney DJ has also been a familiar legal resource guest in several television and radio networks where he shares his views on variety of legal and national issues. He has also been invited as a guest speaker in different gatherings in different schools, as well as other entities including the Anti-Fraud Unit of the United States Embassy. <coughs> in Southeast Asia, Attorney DJ was part of the Philippine delegation and ambassador of Goodwill during the 18th Shift for Southeast Asia Youth Program held in Japan, Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, and the Philippines. In the United States, Attorney DJ also completed a special summer class on global lawyering at the Fordham Law School at Bronx in New York in 2008 and has attended international conventions on social reintegration and psychosocial adjustments in former child soldiers by the mission of Republic of Liberia as well as international water conference at United Nations headquarters in New York City. Above all, Attorney DJ continues to be responsible single dad to his two children, Denise and Diego. As an incumbent senior faculty member in UST since 1991, he also teaches young minds not to primarily attain power, popularity, or wealth, but to simply attain contentment and happiness in life and become good and responsible members of the society and the future members of the legal profession. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Attorney Danielito Jimenez. Thank you, Dr. Before that, guys, we would like to present to you the members of the panel. At my left side is Dr. Fernandez and Dr. Judge Vito, and the previous chair of the panel. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Chairman uh, Dean Ray, uh, Oliver Arianino, and members, uh, Honorable Judge uh, Henry Hito and Attorney B.J. Hernandez. It is my uh, honor and pleasure, uh, Fernandez, it is my honor and pleasure to uh, be able to present to you my humble work. And uh, I also welcome uh, our Dean uh, Lisa Lopez, the uh, Graduate School of Law. Thank you very much, Mom, and the other professors uh, and uh, colleagues of uh, USC Graduate School. Thank you, and good afternoon. 
debunking the non-existence of domestic violence against men, a basis to revisit RA-9262 is a very special topic. It is special because it touches on a very sensitive issue that is seldom subject of discussion. Terms like gender, gender identity, and gender are common words that we hear, but do we really understand them? And what is the impact of these terminologies as regards domestic abuse? Let me share with you the distinction of uh, these three items. When we talk of sexuality, this is primarily the biological assignment given to us. When we are born as a man and we have it, then we are a man. If we are born as a woman, we are a woman. That is sexuality. Gender identity, on the other hand, is different from sexuality. Gender identity is something that uh, we ourselves assign to ourselves. You may be born as a man, but if you believe that you think and feel like a woman, that is your gender identity. And nobody can take away that gender identity from you. Vice versa, if you are born as a woman, but you think you are trapped in a woman's body, but you act like a man, then your gender identity is that of a man. That's why we have terms in this age, such as transsexual, bisexuals, and the like. Gender, on the other hand, is something that is uh, rather tricky. It is tricky because when we talk of uh, gender, this, pertain, this pertains to society's uh, view of how a gender should act and feel. Society over the past decades dictated how women and men should act. If you use fuchsia or pink as a color, this is often associated with female. Now, when we go to domestic abuse or simply intimate partner violence, um, society also dictated over the past decades that men are to be regarded often as perpetrators and women as victims. I remember a story maybe about four or three years ago. There was a boy named Diego and uh, he had uh, an argument with uh, his sister named Denise. It was the sister who started the fight. Um, at one point, uh, Diego became so annoyed and that they started fighting and this 12 year old, old, old kid uh, started defending himself and in the process he was able to hit Denise. Unfortunately, at that instance, the grandmother saw that incident and castigated Diego. The father <coughs> came into the rescue, trying to explain everything, and you know what that boy said? He said, Dad, stop. In this society that we have, if the victim is a woman, and the witness is also a woman, and the person being accused of something is a man, talon you lose. And that is coming from a 12-year-old boy. This is how society sees gender. There is this so-called role-playing idea that women are supposed to be victim while men are supposed to be the perpetrators. Before we go into the, the problem of this, uh, the, this, the, this researcher seeks to address, let me just uh, state that this paper is not about diminishing the rights of women. This is not about depriving them the rights. This is about justice for all. The Equal Protection Clause of the Constitution. The problems are as follows. What is the Philippines' perspective on domestic violence against men using spaces 
local legislations, jurisprudence, published statistical data or report? And how serious is the impact of domestic violence against men? Second is that how do foreign jurisdictions regard domestic violence against men? And finally, taking into account the impact of domestic violence against men as well as using best practices or similar measures of foreign jurisdictions, how can domestic violence against men be appropriately addressed in the Philippines? Before we answer that question, let me just explain why this study. Over the past years, society has viewed men as the aggressors. And we cannot blame society for that. 100 years ago, who would ever expect that women would now be able to vote? That there will be female lawyers eventually? Many years back, women cannot even enter the military. Women are indeed marginalized sectors of the society and they deserve protection. Over the years, however, there is already an overflow of laws that protect women. Right now, we have the Magna Carta uh, for women, or the anti-discrimination law against women, and many other bills. The protection towards uh, women uh, is even highlighted in the law that was passed more than 15 years ago, Republic of 92-62. If a woman is subjected to domestic abuse, or even abuse for that matter by a, a partner, he or she can go to, uh, she, she rather, can go to the barangay, immediately seek a barangay protection order, and prevent the aggressor to continue, the, or the aggression to continue. Legislation for the protection of women is overflowing. That is not to say that we do not respect women's rights. But this study seeks to resolve whether or not it is time, that this time, taking into account the Equal Protection Clause and the Justice for All, is it now time that we take into account the rights of other victims of domestic abuse other than women and children? The method of research that this researcher applied is a descriptive design and qualitative historical and analytical uh, research methodologies. In the process, uh, primary and secondary data were uh, utilized to determine the gap in Philippine laws and the need to uh, supplement, uh, if any, any domestic law that would have a direct impact on this paper. Can I just get one? Answering the problem. Existence of domestic violence against men is actually, this is not a myth. This is not just a concept. Contrary to societal assigned gender role playing, there are in fact a number of uh, interesting cases uh, reported. One of the limitations of these researchers is the ability to secure data on male domestic abuse because there is hardly any data that we could consider except for reports. However, uh, getting in to the study deeper, this researcher was able to figure out that the inability to secure appropriate data for domestic violence against men is founded on several social on several barriers. These are uh, social barriers, practical barriers, and legal barriers. Social barriers are barriers in reporting of domestic violence against men that are founded on beliefs in society. As we mentioned earlier, that uh, men uh, should not treat themselves as victims. Otherwise, this would be construed as 
incompatible to the usual belief that men are invulnerable. This is a social barrier. Practical barrier, on the other hand, pertains to uh, inability of victims of male abuse to report domestic abuse against them because of the perception that there's no sense to report domestic abuse against them. Uh, nobody will listen to them. In the Philippine society, as I mentioned in my paper, uh, the term takusa is something that is not really to be proud of. If you uh, uh, appear to be a victim in a relationship, often people will think of you, ah, takot sa asawa. So these are considerations. And most importantly, the, the legal barriers. The legal barriers, I think, uh, based on my paper, is the one that bars the reporting of these cases, even in the Philippines. Legal barriers because we actually do not have a law that address domestic violence against men. Other than the provisions of the revised penal code on physical injuries. Even if in my in this study it has been established that domestic abuse is more life debilitating when it comes to emotional damage, we do not have any recourse to that. Unlike women, for example, in the case of AAA versus BBB that is mentioned in the paper. Um, the Supreme Court affirmed the conviction for eight years of a husband who was charged with <coughs> verbally abusing the spouse. How was the verbal abuse? He told the wife, ang tanga, tanga mo. And the wife said, oh, this brings about emotional trauma and abuse. And the Supreme Court affirmed that. Why? Because we have a law. RA 9262. Let us try to reverse the situation. How many of us, or how many of you, or men, have experienced the same thing? That you have been told, quote off, quote, ang tanga -tanga mo, and in the process you've been humiliated, you have been affected emotionally or, or traumatically. But then again, what is your recourse? Nulong women, nula po ene, senele. There's no crime and there's no law penalizing it. Domestic abuse or domestic violence against men is something that's really serious. When it comes to Philippine laws, there is a dearth of law on domestic violence against men. It is only women in terms of sexuality and gender that is currently protected. What do we do now? In this paper, this researcher attempted to secure similar pieces of legislation on domestic violence abroad, particularly within Asia. And there's, there are only two uh, continents that uh, provides domestic abuse against men, and that is Cambodia and Indonesia. Taking into account uh, the law regarding elimination of violence in household of 2004 of the Republic of Indonesia and the law on the prevention of domestic violence and the protection of victims in Cambodia, the researcher submits that in addressing domestic violence against men in the Philippines using best practices elsewhere, we can actually do it. In closing, domestic violence against men is not a myth. Men, like women, are not immune from abuse. Justice for all or equal protection clause and the, and the lack of substantial distinction between men and women in terms of abuse already shows this. There is no substantial distinction between men and women when it comes to domestic abuse or intimate partner abuse. Thus, this researcher recommends that uh, there are many recommendations in the paper, but to sum it up, 
Um, there is a current uh, bill passed in Congress, House Bill 488. By the way, this was uh, recently passed uh, September or last September 30, uh, long before this uh, paper has been prepared. But judging from the provisions of House Bill 488, uh, there are items that need to be considered. Thus, this representation and this researcher proposed the introduction of a separate bill that will address domestic violence against men. Uh, this is entitled, An Act Defining Domestic Violence Against Individuals Other Than Women and Children and Providing for Protective Measures for Victims, Prescribing Penalties Thereof and for Other Purposes. An examination of this proposed bill will show a disparity of the bill uh, proposed by Congressman uh, Fidel Morales. And uh, this representation, if it pleases the panel, intends to submit this paper so that intelligently we would be able to advocate that now is the time to push for equal protection. I'd like to uh, leave you uh, with this thought. They say that uh, a twisted truth effectively advocated becomes a lie over time compared to the silent truth. And the silent truth is we all suffer. Thank you very much. Maybe, uh